tonight over fences and across rooftops. The desperate measures taken by a gang of teenage thieves and the simple technology which led to their arrest. The coughing killer Truckee branded an accident waiting to happen as a judge sends him to jail. Tree choppers become water wasters after accidentally rupturing a main at Oaklands Park. And the wartime love letter left behind at a dawn service. Do you know who owns it? This is 10 Eyewitness News. First at five with Kate Freeban. Good evening. Police were forced to scale fences and even rooftops in the dramatic arrest of four teenagers after a chase through the western suburbs. The gang had stolen the car on Tuesday, then broke into another house last night, but they didn't realise their victim had given them exactly the tool police needed to pinpoint their location. Caroline Morano explains. A suspect makes a run for it, but police are in hot pursuit. He's quickly spotted by officers swarming the grove at Woodville Park. The youth scales a house in his bid to escape, hopping from roof to roof. He was just one of four teenagers scrambling through backyards. They tried to, but because I heard the dog, they jumped into my neighbour's fence instead. Startling residents awake at 1.30 in the morning. There was knocking on the door and the window. He said, he's the police and uh, we're looking for some people. Can we go into the backyard? I wake up, I hear at the, my uh, back there um, the noise. The teens had fled on foot from a stolen car they dumped after leading police on a chase. They'd broken into a Tennyson home an hour and a half earlier. I was lying here asleep on the couch and... Um, Woke up and I just noticed in the reflection in the window that there was someone standing in my kitchen with some hats on. I got up and I screamed and then they spotted me and then they ran out. Two handbags and phones were stolen. The intruders didn't count on tracking software in one of the phones. That helped police pinpoint its location not more than five kilometres away. The officers, with the help of police dogs, did the rest. A 17-year-old, two 16-year-olds and a 15-year-old, all from the western suburbs, have been charged with multiple offences. Caroline Morano, 10 Eyewitness News. A killer truckie who callously blamed a coughing fit for causing the crash which killed a woman near Murray Bridge has been jailed for five years. The judge said he had such flagrant disregard for safety on the road that he was an accident waiting to happen. Here's Kate Summers. Maria Dowdle's family may never truly have answers, but today at least they received some small measure of justice. Nothing compensates life, but it's a start and... Um... Yeah, we're just glad he's off the road. The family had watched on as the truck driver who killed the mother of three in a head-on crash continued to try to shift blame with a series of staged coughing fits. <coughs> Some kind of mystery illness he used as his defence. I remember coming over the bridge. Mm -hmm. Linda said I started coughing. But I have no idea what, what I hit or anything else. Belinda was his new girlfriend who was in the cabin of the 56-year-old's truck when he veered onto the wrong side of Swanport Bridge near Murray Bridge. Linda, how are you going? The sentencing judge today said Pillar simply treated his responsibilities on the road with flagrant disregard. Your driving was highly irresponsible and dangerous. You were, in my mind, an accident waiting to happen. Judge David listed Pillar's driving convictions, which date back to the 1980s and include driving on drugs. In the dock, Pillar coughed once, but didn't appear to blackout, as he has done in the past. He will now spend at least three years and ten months behind bars. He also loses his licence for at least 15 years and has further charges pending. It's just important that he's not driving because, yeah, he was a ticking time bomb by the sounds of it. Kate Summers, 10 Eyewitness News. A maintenance accident has sent water skyrocketing into the air outside the Marion Shopping Centre. Nearby residents thought they were hearing rain on the roof until stepping outside to be confronted by the giant gusher. Tim Morgan reports. Almost on the doorstep of the Marion Shopping Centre, an unexpected addition to the shop front. I looked out because I thought, oh, it's raining, but I looked out the back, but there's no rain. And I came out here and there's a great big fountain. 
The main ruptured on Diagonal Road early this afternoon, shooting so high it watered the tops of nearby gum trees and several backyards. I thought it was going to um, flood their front unit because it was coming up so high that it was sort of blowing over the front fence. Major fountain that was coming all over my back fence. The sheer size leaving some struggling to believe their eyes. I've seen them on TV that there's been water leaks everywhere but didn't expect to be out at the front of our place. It took repair crews around 40 minutes to bring the water under control but nearby residents praised them for their speed given the rupture's size. An SA water spokesperson says the damage was caused by work going on in the area. The men working on the trees, cutting them down, that broke the water main, I'm sure. They were digging too much. Three cars were involved in a minor crash as passing motorists pause for a look. Just one lane southbound remains open as the clean-up continues into peak hour. Tim Morgan, 10 Eyewitness News. The first creditors' meeting has been held for South Australia's embattled RSL. Brett Clappis is at the meeting, which has just ended. Brett, have we learned any more about the league's financial troubles? Well, not a huge amount, Kate. The, about 20 people attended the first creditors' meeting here on North Terrace this afternoon. Now, creditors arrived and entered the closed meeting seeking answers on a varying degree of money tied up with the state's RSL branch, which was placed into voluntary administration earlier this month. Now, we understand that that meeting has just wrapped up. Of the few creditors that have emerged, we've been told by them that they are uh, very little, uh, well, no clearer, rather, on the scale of the financial problem. The branch branch and the administrator has so far declined to comment on what is transpiring in that meeting today. We're told by creditors the meeting heard the RSL could be forced with a tough decision to sell assets which could upset veterans. It was described to us as the branch is asset rich with cash flow problems. Now all that have emerged so far from the meeting are determined to ensure the survival of the branch which some fear could actually be under threat. I think all the creditors were understanding of the general situation and wanted to have a, a solution that would uh, ensure the survivability of the RSLSA. If the RSL continues to, to operate, and that looks like it may occur, um, then there will have to be some cutting of cloth. Now, creditors meet again in a month, Kate. They're hoping that by that stage, administrators will have a much clearer picture for them on moving forward. Thank you, Brett. Police are investigating a stabbing at Elizabeth North. They were called to the Braymore Street home at about 6.15 last night. They found the victim with stab wounds to his stomach. He was taken to the Royal Adelaide Hospital, but his injuries are not life-threatening. Police don't believe the attack was random. A study has found Adelaide's rental market is fast becoming out of reach for our lowest paid. Single welfare recipients in particular are only able to afford a tiny fraction of what's on offer. Hannah Ford with the details. Finding somewhere to live for welfare recipients has become even harder in Adelaide, for some near impossible. It really shows that if you're a single person on any form of welfare, you can't afford to rent a house in Adelaide. Anglicare studied the rentals advertised in a single weekend. Of 3,661 properties available, less than half were within reach of a household on a minimum wage. Only 62 affordable for a single person on income support. Being a single mother, you know, paying over $300 a week, you know, um, on a full wage, but, you know, and paying childcare and stuff like that. You know, I'm lucky if I'm left with $200 to last me the fortnight. We're a single income family and it is tough going, but there is hardly any houses on the market even to rent. Anglicare says the low income lockout has hit crisis point and fears homelessness could rise as a result. We're just coming into winter, it's getting cold and there are going to be more families sleeping in cars. It's calling on the state government to set up a social housing bond to channel investment towards affordable housing. Yeah, it's, it's hard, it's, it's, struggle. it's a struggle. So in the meantime, I've got to live where and sleep wherever I can because I'm homeless. Hannah Ford, 10 Eyewitness News. And now here's Nick Butler. Nick, uh, what's happening in sport? Lots are going on, Kate. Nice to see you. Now, plenty of footy around. We'll have all the round six team news. Here's some good news for Port fans. Hamish Hartlett has declared himself fit to face the Lions. Pretty much haven't missed a training session for um, the whole pre-season and season so far, so to, to miss a couple of games has been uh, a little bit frustrating. 
And uh, copping a backhander, rival players continue to unload on Maria Sharapova. Harsh but fair, I reckon, and uh, plenty more later in sport. Thank you, Nick. Still to come, urgent calls for a funding boost for the state coroner in the wake of the Oakton aged care abuse claims. The space mission about to unlock the secrets of Saturn. And all aboard the London Express, Qantas launches its non-stop service. No other show changes lives like MasterChef. I was selling security cameras. In a premiere special, you'll be amazed at just how much these ex-contestants have achieved. I've done a lot of things I never really thought that I would. Find out where they are now. 7.30 tonight. Dreamland's giving it back South Australia with stacks of cash. Sensational deals. Buy selected big brand mattresses and get Dreamland cash to spend on your dream bedroom furniture or Manchester. Stop dreaming and start shopping for your new bedroom. Dreamland. It's back. 990. A crispy Mediterranean pizza base. Napoli sauce. Your choice of four delicious toppings. 990 at Primo. Where are you going for your next meal? I know, Primo. When it comes to outdoor home improvement excellence and solutions, there's only one brand to remember, Olympic Industries. Visit us at the Home Living Expo or one of our display sites. But hurry, sail on for one week only. Olympic Industries, built to last. Simple cleansing wipes with Aqualock. Keeps every wipe as fresh as the first. Smile and see how good it feels. For years, this little fella's been the face of Kleenex. Oh. Oh. But now we've introduced new Kleenex Complete Clean, a superior combination of softness, strength and absorbency. It's new. It has ripples. And we got to wondering, does a superior toilet paper need a superior spokes animal? So we're going to audition a bunch of spokes animals to see if they can do any better. What could possibly go wrong? New Kleenex Complete Clean, a superior combination of softness, strength and absorbency. A dream home, colossal cash, amazing holidays, luxury cars and much more. The MS Game Changer Lottery is back and you have an incredible 1 in 15 chance to win big. The grand prize is a stunning $1.6 million Metricon home and land package or $1.5 million cash. You win, you choose. Get your tickets today at msgamechanger.com.au. All proceeds benefit South Australians living with MS. Euro Solar's biggest ever solar sale is on now. Massive discounts on popular packages. Save thousands on the biggest systems. Prices start from an unbeatable 1991. Limited quantities and only while stocks last. Call 1300 Euro Solar. Mighty May Sale at Godfrey's. Half price for this amazing Hoover cordless handstick. It comes with a deep cleaning brush and quickly turns into a handbag for a top to bottom clean. Now half price a mighty 149. Mighty May Sale, but only at Godfrey's. Drop into your local IGA today for the gigantic sale. Don't miss this week's half price specials. Plus, loads more savings right across the store. Paying too much for comprehensive car insurance sucks. But with $100 off for buying online, today is Greg's Day. Don't ignore the obvious. Switch to SGIC for surprisingly good insurance. This Wall Street high flyer paid off his victims to cover up the most heinous crime. He's clearly trying to buy him off. But has his latest victim found the perfect plan to make him pay? New SVU, 8.30 tonight. It's night four for the Voigtlander family. So can they make it to car night? That's something you see in a tunnel. Board right now, you win the game and you're on a night five to play for a brand new Mitsubishi. So, big decision, what's it going to be, Captain? Family Feud coming up next on 10. Tonight, the PM acts to force the big gas companies into keeping local prices down. So, how will it work and will it work? That's tonight at 6.30.
The US president's announced his new tax plan, which slashes rates for both individuals and businesses. But Donald Trump hasn't offered any explanation as to how it'll be funded without increasing the country's budget deficit. The president has also been accused of looking after the big end of town and ignoring low-income earners. This isn't going to be easy. Doing big things never is. We, be, we will be attacked from the left and we will be attacked from the right. But one thing is certain. I would never, ever bet against this president. US senators have also attended a briefing on North Korea overnight. They say there will be tighter sanctions and the anti-missile system stationed in South Korea is expected to be operational within days. A hiker who's been missing for 47 days in Nepal has been found alive, but rescuers were too late to save his girlfriend. The young Taiwanese couple went missing in early March after getting lost in a snowstorm and falling down a waterfall. They survived on snow, water and some salt they'd been carrying, but the 21-year-old man says his 19-year-old girlfriend died three days ago. The Pope has paid a year's worth of rent for a section of private beach near Rome so disabled children can enjoy the sea and the sun. A charity has rented the section for the past five years and says it's astonished at the pontiff's donation. The program is run by volunteers who make sure people with disabilities are safe in the water and can get around on the sand. NASA's Cassini space probe has begun its dive through Saturn's ring system, the final phase of its 20-year mission. If all goes well, it'll collect new scientific data, which will give more information on the evolution of giant planets and solar systems. It could also reveal the makeup and origin of Saturn's rings before the probe burns up in Saturn's atmosphere. Non-stop flights from Australia to the UK went on sale today, promising convenience for tourists and a business bonanza. Despite a premium price tag, seats on the first flight are already almost sold out. Nick Way has the details. London's calling, with direct flights taking off next March from Perth, and Luke Chitty's lucky enough to be on board. Just a piece of history with the first non-stop flight to London. Um, it's, it's the start of the next era of aviation for, for West Australia. It's going to be great. The inaugural daily 236-seat Qantas service almost sold out within hours. Which is a game-changing route with a game-changing aircraft, the 787 Dreamliners. Passengers keen on the convenience and happy to pay a premium. I'd love it. In a new plane, feel much more refreshed. It'd be good. Looking forward to it. Depending on connections, current stopover flights can be three or more hours longer than the new direct service. Agents say Qantas's $2,270 economy price is competitive. But inbound tourists are where we'll land a business bonanza. Perth's current 150,000 UK visitors per year forecast to grow, along with stopovers by Eastern States passengers en route to London. It makes Perth the western gateway to Australia. We're no longer somewhere that seemed to be at the end of a journey. We're actually a central hub in part of a journey now. The takeoff promises not only a $36 million annual boost for Western Australia, if it's extended to four daily flights, it could yield hundreds of millions of dollars across the country and create up to 7,000 jobs. Qantas and Tourism Western Australia to launch a new ad campaign, free per stop-offs and low-fare regional packages to keep visitors in WA longer. Nick Way, 10 Eyewitness News. Well, yesterday was the coldest day of the year so far. Jody Oddy, was it any warmer today? <laughs> Yeah, Kate, it did warm up a couple of degrees in Adelaide, but I tell you what, she's chilly up here right now at the summit. But if you do fancy just a lazy 80 kilometre hike around the hillside, I've got a fantastic idea for you. And this is all an initiative of the Jodie Lee Foundation. They, of course, do some wonderful work for bowel cancer awareness. So on May 19 and 20, the hikers will take off along the Heysen Trail around Victor Harbour. And there's still some time to sign up for the event, but you will have to be quick. So check out their website. It's www.jodyleefoundation.org.au. Now, as you can see, the hikers have just walked up Mount Lofty, so they are extremely dedicated. So please jump online and make a donation and you'll see that they do some outstanding work. Well, the foundation was set up in 2010 following the death of my wife from bowel cancer. And bowel cancer is very prevalent. It's the second biggest cancer killer, yet it's up to 90% preventable if you can catch it early. So the job at the foundation is all about raising awareness um, to ensure people protect themselves against bowel cancer. It's a preventable disease. 
Kate, uh, warming up a touch over the weekend and uh, maybe a few showers. We discussed this today. We said 20% of sh uh, chance of showers tonight up here at Mount Lofty. And I'll tell you what, we are now officially in the 20%. So thanks for that. I'll be back at five to six with all your weather details. <laughs> no worries. Thank you, Jodie. Still to come, a real-time boost for public transport users as Adelaide's bus stops join the digital age. Our major telco is slammed for signing customers up to phone plans they can't afford. And to what to watch for as Australians become some of the top targets for hackers. This year, MasterChef is serving up the most extraordinary food ever. None of us would have thought that the quality of cooking could get better and better. The food is extraordinary. Smash it back. MasterChef. Premieres 7.30 Monday on 10. Another life saved with the Chemist Warehouse app. Take control of your health and wellness. Download now. Ellington's new season stock is here. We're unpacking all the latest winter wear with up to 20% off the best brands in the country. That's right, up to 20% off. Ellington's new season country clothing and western wear. In store and online. <laughs> As a local steel dealer, I've got lots of mates and they're all good customers. They trust me to do the right thing by them, but that's what mates do. But we want more, so now we're giving everyone mates rates. Steel chainsaws from just $2.49. Blowers from $2.69. Hedge trimmers from $2.99. Cleaners from only $1.99. And grass trimmers from just $1.79. Mates rates now at your local steel store. Thanks, mate. Visit your local steel dealer. Find yours online. Your rental property. Choose Harcourts as your property manager and we'll look after it like it was ours. One of our many promises, no hidden fees. Go to harcourts.com.au. Harcourts, the real people in real estate. There's nothing like a good meal with friends until you start feeling bloating and discomfort. Try new Activia with Probiotics Bifidus Acta Regularis. Help improve your digestive comfort with Activia and get comfortable with your tummy. Make it bold, make it wow, make it fresh, make it now. Just arrived, the latest look designer rugs were for 50, make it yours for 199 with a five year warranty. Big classic style, 400 to 120, the latest 180, the softest shaggy from $50. Make it bronze a million. The latest look from just $50, make it in store online now. Make it bronze a million. Eurosolar's biggest ever solar sale is on now. Massive discounts on popular packages. Save thousands on the biggest systems. Prices start from an unbeatable 1991. Limited quantities and only while stocks last. Call 1300 Eurosolar. Hungry Jack's 5 for 5.95 Super Stunner just got better. Grab a Whopper Junior and get small chips, three nuggets, a small Coke and a drumstick mini. New 5 for 5.95 Whopper Junior Super Stunner meal deal. Available all day, every day. This is Dewey. He senses danger before it appears. Sorry, mate. You see, Stewie has the Chemist Warehouse app to remind him when to see his doctor, take his medication and refill his scripts. It's a real lifesaver. Download the Chemist Warehouse app today. It's free. with our very art and ding dong. Anything stiff I'm no good at. Plus, get ready for mayhem as we play Australia's cheapest game show, the $5 quiz. Studio 10, 8.30 tomorrow. Australia has just climbed into the top 10 countries being targeted by hackers who specialise in blackmail and their methods have never been more cunning or sinister. Elisa Throden reports. Nothing is safe online, 
thieves can ransack your phone, PC, smart TV, any device hooked up to the internet is fair game. Your financial documents, reports, even intimate photos. What's worse, once it's stolen, they demand a ransom for its return. Because last year it was around the $300 mark, now it's anywhere up to like $1,000 or more. So the more people who are paying, the more they're asking for. In just the past year in Australia, there's been a 36% increase in hackers blackmailing victims. And more than a quarter are coughing up the money to have their stolen information returned. To protect yourself, change passwords on all devices regularly. Keep software up to date. Be extra careful on email and always back up your files. If people back up, mm. then they're not going to be held to ransom, so they're not going to be inclined to pay, and we're going to start changing the, the influence that we have with the cyber criminals. Printers are often forgotten when security is upgraded. 98% of people and businesses have no protection. It connects to the cloud, it connects to the Wi-Fi, and it's the ability to send emails. So we need to apply the same policies that we apply on a PC to the printing devices. One of Mohammed's clients had invoices stolen from an unsecured printer. It cost them $200,000. And this is how easy it is. Say you want to send a copy of your driver's licence to a bank to apply for a loan. This printer keeps a record of it, which can then be hacked into, and that private information is stolen. It pays to protect. Elisa Throden, 10 Eyewitness News. Australia's three big telco companies have been slammed in a new report which claims thousands of Australians are signing up to phone plans and contracts they can't afford. The Financial and Consumer Rights Council says Telstra, Optus and Vodafone are failing customers, especially those on welfare payments. Lauren Day has more. It's a desperate call for help, but phone companies aren't answering. But they should recognise people who are on disability pensions and not think, oh, here we go, we can take this one for a ride. She's an idiot. Telstra customer Vicky receives just over $400 a fortnight on a disability pension, but claims her phone provider convinced her to buy a tablet she didn't need and couldn't afford for $90 a month. And I kept on saying to the consultant, I don't think this tablet is right for me. Yes, it is, she said. After complaints, she finally returned it. But financial counsellors say the trap of phone contracts is ruining the lives of hundreds of thousands of Australians. In a Rank the Telco report, the Financial and Consumer Rights Council found the culture of phone providers puts more emphasis on the sale and not if the bill can be paid. Each of the three main companies, that being Telstra, Vodafone and Optus, uh, failed in their way in which they assist Victorians in financial difficulty. The council says in comparison, even banks and energy retailers have improved their hardship practices and are now considered far better in their standards than telcos. The findings ringing alarm bells for the Prime Minister. We'll obviously look at them very closely, but this is clearly a matter for the ACCC. In separate statements, Telstra, Optus and Vodafone said they have offerings for low-income customers and provide support during times of financial hardship. Lauren Day, 10 Eyewitness News. A young mother jailed for drug trafficking has had her prison term suspended. Why an appeals court let her out more than a year early next. Plus, why a speeding driver who struck down a father in front of his children will also be free by year's end. And a search for the owner of a perfectly preserved love letter lost in Adelaide on Anzac Day. I'm going to let you in a little secret. This kitchen will look brand new, but it's not. The five secrets to an inexpensive Renault revealed. The whole kitchen, everything, what a bargain. Make your dream kitchen a reality. This is amazing. The five secrets revealed. 7.30 Friday. It's going to be grueling, intense, brutal and awful. Punishing, stressful, daunting, and painful. But you're going to love every minute. Ford Everest, not just another four-wheel drive. How will we use knowledge for the future? Will it help protect our fragile native wildlife? 
or turn the tide of our ocean's ecosystems. Reimagine technology to create a more sustainable future and fully recognize in the eyes of a child the real meaning of progress. The future of the world is not known. How we choose to shape it is Charles Darwin University, a new world university. Prices are falling at Victory. Receive a $100 Visa gift card when you buy Victory blinds, curtains, shutters and awnings. Call now for a free measure and quote. Victory, Victory, curtains and blinds, one, three, one, three. A dream home, colossal cash, amazing holidays, luxury cars and much more. The MS Game Changer Lottery is back and you have an incredible 1 in 15 chance to win big. The grand prize is a stunning $1.6 million Metricon home and land package or $1.5 million cash. You win, you choose. Get your tickets today at msgamechanger.com.au. All proceeds benefit South Australians living with MS. Do your teeth need effective defence from sensitivity? Try Colgate Sensitive Pro Relief from Chemist Warehouse. Colgate Sensitive Pro Relief is clinically proven to shield and protect sensitive teeth against hot and cold foods, building a long-lasting protective barrier to block nerve pain. Right now at Chemist Warehouse, Colgate Sensitive Pro Relief is just $4.99. Restore your confidence with Colgate Sensitive Pro Relief. Live, look, feel well at Chemist Warehouse. Crumbs. That was one toasty summer. Yeah, I'm all out of energy. Chill, little guy. We're never out of energy. Not with offers like this from Lumo. <laughs> Switch to Lumo this autumn and get 15% off your total electricity bill when you pay on time. Cutting costs is always cool. I'll toast to that. It's time for change. Go online today or call 131 Lumo. Time for change with Lumo. It's going to be rocky, daunting, and unforgiving. But you're going to love every minute with an epic three-ton towing. Ford Everest, not just another four-wheel drive. This season, MasterChef is serving up its best food yet. MasterChef premieres, 7.30 Monday. This is Adelaide's 10 Eyewitness News. Tonight's headlines. Four teens have been arrested despite their desperate and inventive attempts to evade capture following an early morning crime spree in Adelaide's West. A truckie who tried to blame a coughing fit for a fatal crash near Murray Bridge has been jailed for five years. And workers have accidentally ruptured an underground main at Oaklands Park, sending water skyrocketing outside the Marion Shopping Centre. A woman whose two children witnessed their father run down and killed has slammed the sentence handed to the speeding driver as absolutely unfair. Even though the driver had been warned about his bad behaviour before, he'll still be eligible for parole within months. Court reporter Kate Summers has the details. Dee Haywood was angry as she left court, heading home to her two children with the knowledge the man who killed their father could be free by year's end. Kane Bowman ran down 45-year-old Kieran Haywood and left him for dead as he was walking his children away from soccer training at Ingle Farm in 2015. They were left alone with their dying father when Bowman fled the scene and went on to try to destroy evidence. 27-year-old Bowman didn't have a licence, was speeding and has a string of driving offences dating back to 2006. He also has an intellectual disability and his lawyers had tried to claim that he was unfit to stand trial. In sentencing, Judge David accepted that Bowman's disability reduced his ability to understand the consequences of his actions, but said his previous convictions should have deterred him from re-offending. He was sentenced to at least two years and three months in jail, but with time already served, he'll be eligible for parole in November. Kate Summers, 10 Eyewitness News. A convicted drug trafficking mother's cried in court as she succeeded in having her jail term suspended. 
Soraya Constant has twice been convicted of drug trafficking and committed the second offence while already serving a suspended sentence. The 32-year-old begged to be released because she has two young children. The 13-month suspension handed to her today by the appeals court. The old adage, cat on a hot tin roof, would work emotionally. Um, if you can imagine not knowing what's going to happen with your life for sure, um, for this period of time that she's waited. Constant and her youngest daughter will be able to move interstate to join her partner and first child. The state coroner hasn't ruled out opening new inquests into the deaths of residents at the Oakton Aged Care Facility if families feel they have fresh evidence. And the opposition's ramping up pressure on the government to urgently release funding to help. Gia Laux reports. The coroner plays a vital role, helping to prevent the deaths of South Australians. The coroner is under extreme financial pressure. Mark Johns revealing chronic underfunding has hindered major inquests. And now the Oakden debacle is caught up in the financial fight. Some families of residents want deaths at the shamed facility to be re-examined. A spokesperson for the coroner said he has investigated deaths at Oakden previously. But if families now have fresh concerns, he'll consider reviewing closed cases subject to resources. And I would ask that the coroner be resourced immediately uh, so that he can put a team together and make sure that we have some clear answers. One inquest is scheduled to go ahead later this year. Police don't have enough evidence to prosecute anyone in the three Oakton cases referred to them. Aged rights advocates say it's now more important than ever that victims and their families speak out. If you see something, if you think it's wrong, say something. The Aged Care Complaints Commissioner says victims often question how a facility can keep its accreditation despite complaints, as Oakden did before its closure was ordered. You have to realise that when they go in and do an accreditation process, it's a point in time and they're looking at a certain set of things, whereas the complaint to us might be about something very specific that might have happened since that visit. Gia Laux, 10 Eyewitness News. South Australia's Rossi Boots has been given a quarter of a million dollars to further expand its market. The state government has provided the money to help bolster the 106-year-old company. Rossi has previously expressed frustration that the federal government has failed to award supply contracts for its locally made products. The extra funding is also likely to create at least a dozen more jobs. The Prime Minister will impose restrictions on gas exports in order to preserve the resource for Australian businesses and families. And he claims the new licensing regime may also bring lower prices for some. Jonathan Lee reports. It's the great Aussie rip-off Australians paying more for gas than the countries we're exporting to. Why? Too much gas has been contracted to be sold overseas, leaving the domestic market short of gas. Pushing prices through the roof placing an estimated 65,000 jobs at stake. After twice hauling energy companies to Parliament, the government today took off the gloves, implementing what it calls an export licensing regime to ration resources on the East Coast. Ensuring that where a gas shortage is identified, then export restrictions will be put in place with the result that the market, the Australian market, will have adequate gas supplies. That mechanism would only be activated in the event that there is an identified shortfall. Mr Turnbull's made the uh, promise, the prediction that gas prices will halve, that the new system will come in on 1 July. I want to hear the gas companies confirm that they're signed up to this. Experts are sceptical. We're going to face high gas prices for the foreseeable future with this policy or without this policy. The government concedes its licensing regime is only a short-term fix. What it really wants and needs is the states to lift their bans and allow the exploration of new gas fields. One plan opening the Galilee and Bowen basins in central Queensland, linking it to the east coast via a pipeline. Malcolm Turnbull speculating on radio that money could be loaned by the long-touted infrastructure fund, a fund that's yet to spend a cent. We need more pipeline infrastructure and we are looking at a number of proposals. It could be the difference between a pipe dream and affordable energy. Jonathan Lee, 10 Eyewitness News. Adelaide's public transport system has finally reached the digital age. The Lord Mayor and Transport Minister today unveiled the city's first real-time digital bus stop on Grote Street. It combines GPS on the buses and a Bluetooth monitoring system to calculate accurate travel times. And then we'll be able to roll this system out principally in initially 
along the uh, City Connector route, which goes around the City of Adelaide, which is uh, very, very frequently used by many, many people and very, very popular. Only two more digital bus stops are planned at this stage for King William Street and King William Road. A wartime love letter has been found in the most unromantic of places, apparently lost during the city's Anzac Day services. The search now on to reunite the precious relic with its owners. Chloe Boris reports. As the crowds cleared on Anzac Day, one small keepsake remained. The next day, in the gutter, a treasure found amid the trash. It was with other rubbish, but it just stood out for some reason. Fragile, but otherwise perfectly preserved, even despite Tuesday's rain. A World War II love letter from a wife to her husband. And it could be something someone's taken to the Anzac March for you know, many, many years. Um, and I've, they're probably devastated that they've lost it. Dated 1944, it's addressed to Private Deacon in the Blackwatch Royal Highland Regiment. At home in England, his wife, who signed off Lily, told him news of their daughter and small things happening around the home. Pat and I are fine. We're also fattening the chickens up for Christmas. They are lovely and growing ever so fast. But she goes on to apologise that her message is so brief. Darling, you will not mind my letters being short, as all I can write about is my love for you. Without my knowing you love me, I should have nothing to live for. You are my life. You can tell that there's some worry in what's been written, but also a lot of love, so it's quite sweet. The letter was posted to British Command in India, but redirected to a mobile hospital. The letter's finder now keeping it safe until it can find its way home. Chloe Boris, 10 Eyewitness News. The right person is watching. Well, here is someone that's written a few love letters. Nick Butler, what's happening <laughs> One in sport? In grade three, I reckon. Now we've got uh, some really big selection news to reveal after the break. Now, Hamish Hartlett is a certain starter after completing training today. And the backhanders just keep coming for Maria Sharapova. So Which great Australians have joined our call to ban the bag? That's at 6 30. It may be the most underestimated contestant. I'm a crane operator, so a little bit different than cooking. Because Pete's food is extraordinary. Delicious. Will Pete smash the competition? You know he's a crane operator. Master Chef premieres Monday. It's Stonecraft Super Sale. Fantastic weekly specials on pool coping, pavers and wall claddings, travertine, granite, limestone, sandstone, stackstone, firehards, veranda edging, even cutting surface. Hurry, limited stocks. Open seven days, mile in south. Stonecraft, all natural specialists. Two legends together at last. KFC marinated in Tabasco sauce. Great news, everyone. Tickets are now selling in the MS Game Changer Lottery. The grand prize is huge. You could choose a $1.6 million Metricon home and land package, or if that doesn't excite you, how does $1.5 million cash sound instead? Game-changing home or game-changing cash? But this isn't the only life-changing prize on offer. Buy your tickets today and you will also be in the running to win the early bird prize. The choice between a Porsche 911 or $250,000 in cash. Supercar or super cash? There are over $2.5 million in prizes and each ticket has a 1 in 15 chance to win. So don't miss out. Visit msgamechanger.com.au and buy your tickets now. When it comes to outdoor home improvement excellence and solutions, there's only one brand to remember, Olympic Industries. Visit us at the Home Living Expo or one of our display sites. But hurry, sail on for one week only. Olympic Industries, built to last. With tips, investing in property has never been easier or more affordable. If you had $5 a week spare, just $5, you could own one of these sensational apartments in Prospect. $5 will get you any apartment on any floor, even the penthouse. Plus, for a limited time, you'll pay zero stamp duty. Two bedroom apartments, secure, undercover parking, ready to live in, all for just $5 a week. Don't believe it? Call tips now. 
sick and tired of the same cold and flu season routine? Ethical Nutrients Exclusive Immune Defense may help reduce the severity and duration of colds and flu and relieve symptoms naturally. Ethical Nutrients, we can help you. If you've put off going solar, now is the time. Euro Solar, Australia's largest solar retailer, is having its biggest ever solar sale. Secure huge discounts on 3, 4 and 5 kilowatt systems. Prices slashed on the latest battery-ready hybrid inverter systems. Save thousands on massive build-smashing 6 kilowatt packages. With fully installed systems starting from an unbeatable 1991, don't miss this once-a-year opportunity. Limited quantities and only while stocks last. So call 1300 Euro Solar now. Can Bull win this case? You're sort of. When the whole town's against him? I always hated you. New Bull, Sunday. Good evening. Well, after missing three games with busted ribs, Josh Jenkins has been named to take on the Tigers on Sunday. Now, Daniel Talia has also been picked to play. Here's Max Burford. They say time heals all wounds, but even the Crows' doctors were surprised that in just five days, Daniel Talia's injury diagnosis has gone from this... But that's not a cramp, Lynchy, not a minute nah, into the game. No, that's a high left hamstring. ...to this. Um, he trained this morning, and we'll see how he pulls up in the morning, but uh, the way he trained today, he's, he's on track. The confusing nature of Talia's seemingly miraculous recovery cleared up by the coach today. And the scan was uh, was clear. It looks like it might be some tendonitis that he was suffering and that's what triggered off and I think maybe the uh, the standing, he cooled down over the um, the ceremony last week from, for Anzac Day and then when he went to go he, he felt something. Pike also confirmed that Josh Jenkins has finally resumed contact drills four weeks after injuring his ribs. And we'll see you know, how he pulls up tomorrow morning. But he's certainly uh, he's getting closer and closer to playing. Jake Kelly has been given the green light to return, but Riley Knight will miss at least a week. Despite Adelaide and Richmond both being undefeated, the Tigers will run on to Adelaide Oval this Sunday as heavy underdogs. It's a coliseum environment. It feels like the fans that are sitting on the top tier there are, are literally right on top of you. There's no point whimpering into an environment like that. You've got to go in all guns blazing. Rewalt has been unstoppable, but he says the Tigers are 5-0 and because of the grit and determination of his younger teammates. Like we copped a pasting towards the end of last year and we were in a, in a really bad spot as a, as, a, as a club and I think that makes them sort of really respect where we're at at the moment. Max Burford, 10 Eyewitness News. OK, Port will welcome back Hamish Hartlett and Jack Homsch for Saturday's clash with the Lions. Now, Travis Boak will miss with that hammy injury while youngster Aidan Johnson is the unlucky omission. Hamish Hartlett believes scarring from an old injury cost him a game last Friday night. In my second year at the club, I had multiple quad injuries around the same spot that it's sore at the moment and we think there might be some um, scar tissue that's just sort of pulled apart and that's what's creating a bit of soreness. Hartlett got through training without issue today and will return against the Lions. After three games out with a knee injury, Port's defensive rock, Jack Homsch, is also back. At Brisbane have got some pretty outstanding young key tolls in their forward line, so Homsch will match up with one of them um, and again it'll, it'll bolster our strength uh, back in defence there. Aidan Johnson is the unlucky omission after an eye-catching debut, meaning Hinkley will have to move a few midfield magnets to replace injured skipper Travis Boak. Chatty Wingard played a bit more midfield on the weekend, so um, I suspect we'll, we'll probably see him there again. He, he played really well um, and maybe you might see a German MP, Sammy Gray. He might slide into the midfield from time to time as well. That flexibility and depth, one of the key reasons the Port boys have been able to start the season so impressively. It probably hasn't been that um, that confidence and that aura amongst the group for you know, probably 12, 18 months, so it's really exciting. OK, Melbourne forward Jesse Hogan is mourning the death of his father Tony and has been granted leave. As Brett Thomas reports, Hogan won't play against the Bombers on Sunday. Tony Hogan, a waffle footballer with Subiaco and a teammate of former AFL chairman Mike Fitzpatrick, passed away yesterday following a long battle with cancer. He had moved to Melbourne recently to be closer to his son, Demon Star, Jesse Hogan. All along, probably for the last uh, four to six weeks, has been really difficult for, for Jesse. And we've, as a club, tried to support him through this and we'll do the same this week. Um, he won't play this weekend against Essendon and, you know, in terms of timelines, post that, we'll leave that in Jesse's hands. It puts into perspective Hogan's form battles and his trip home to WA during a suspension where he was criticised for smoking a cigarette at a music festival. 
you try and put yourself in Jesse's situation and uh, no one knows how they're going to deal with it. And as I said, he's had to deal with that publicly. Hogan has the full support of his teammates as well. It's a tough time for Jesse and his family, um, all the players and the, the whole club are rallying behind him. Um, and our thoughts are with him. With Hogan and Jake Spencer missing, a heavy load falls on the shoulders of makeshift ruckman Cam Pedersen and Jack Watts. Well, he's played that role before and done quite well, so uh, Jack Watts has done a, a pretty good job uh, in the replacement of Gorney and, and Spence on the weekend. Hibbard's former club Essendon could accentuate that lack of height by selecting Tom Bell Chambers for his first game this season. It probably makes our planning a little bit more difficult about how they're going to set that up, but um, you know our focus will be on you know picking a team that we think is good enough to win this game and playing to our style. David Myers is also in the mix, collecting 35 disposals in his first VFL game back from injury. Brett Thomas, 10 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Brett. Well, Adelaide United midfielder Jordan O'Doherty is calling on the club to re-sign out of contract striker Baba Diawara. Now, the Senegalese import has played a big part in the Reds' improved late-season form, scoring five goals in 12 appearances. He'd be a great uh, keep for the club and he'd be a great keep for the A-League because strikers like that don't come around often and hopefully he can continue doing what he's doing. The Reds returned today from their three-all draw with Gamba Osaka over in Japan. They have just under two weeks to prepare for their must-win final Asian Champions League group game against Jiangsu FC. Well, Eugenie Bouchard has launched a fearsome backhand at Maria Sharapova, calling her a cheat who should have been kicked out of tennis. Now, the sledge comes as the controversial Russian won her first game back since her doping ban ended. 15 months on the sidelines, over at last for Maria Sharapova. And that will do it. The celebrations are hers. I've been waiting for this uh, moment for a long time. While her suspension for using banned drug meldonium has finished, the condemnation hasn't. She's a cheater, and so to me, um, I mean, I don't think a cheater in any sport should be allowed to play that sport again. I think from the WTA, it sends the wrong message um, to young kids, you know, cheat and we'll welcome you back with open arms. Winning her comeback game at Stuttgart was nothing compared to the battle Sharapova faced later, a grilling she knew was coming. Dunking from the sun. Um, Maria, oh, God. So <laughs> <sighs> nice to see you too. Words and, and quotes and articles is not what matters in life, and I've learned that very well in the past year. Sharapova serving it up to those, including first-round opponent Roberta Vinci, who questioned her right to be at the Porsche Grand Prix. I'm not getting a wild card to receive a trophy or a golden platter. I have to get through the matches and I still have to win them, um, and that's my job. The 30-year-old meets fellow Russian Ekaterina Makarova in the second round. Adam Hawes, 10 Eyewitness News. OK, we've seen some shameless dives in soccer over the years, but not many would top this one in last night's EPL clash between Arsenal Did and Leicester. Did it hit him in the face? No, it hit him on the shoulder. Oh, dear, oh, dear. You won't want to watch that again tonight. Ah! Uh, Alexis Sanchez copying a yellow card for his antics, so we'll give the referee our play of the day. Occasionally, you can just overdo it. No, yeah. Alexis is over. Oh, yeah, that's sport. See you later. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Jody Oddy is along with our weather details coming up next. The grocery store that lets you pay what you like. That's tonight at 6.30. It's one of the most competitive F1 seasons in years. Sebastian Vettel wins. Ferrari and Mercedes are neck and neck. But at F1 Russia, can our Aussie Daniel Ricciardo cause an upset? Don't miss a second of the action. Sunday, live on One. Is sensitive skin a concern for you and your family? Try the dermatologically recommended QV Gentle Wash from Chemist Warehouse. Free from soap and fragrances, QV Skincare cleanses and moisturises skin, caring for the whole family from head to toe. Exclusive to Chemist Warehouse, QV Gentle Wash 1.25 litre is just $16.99. For everyday sensitive skincare, use QV. Live, look, feel well at Chemist Warehouse.
Hi everyone, I'm Nerida Ford and I'm here to tell you about the incredible MS Game Changer Lottery Grand Prize. For the first time ever, the winner will get to choose between a stunning $1.6 million Metricon home like this one or $1.5 million in cash. Live mortgage free in your dream home built by Australia's most loved home builder or take a huge amount of cash instead. Imagine that. The total prize package is valued at over $2.5 million, including luxury cars, overseas holidays, home electronics and much more. And you have an amazing one in 15 chance to win big. So visit msgamechanger.com.au to get your tickets today. Great prizes, great odds and all for a great cause. Funds raised by the MS Game Changer Lottery benefit South Australians living with MS. I've been a forensic artist for over 30 years. I do the composite sketches. The Surface Pro has a powerful processor. The computer has to start thinking as fast as my brain does. This has become a super powerful tool for me. The most extraordinary season ever. Premiere, 7.30 Monday. Four days to go. Coming up on Family Feud, we'll be asking two Aussie families to name something that is typically German. Let's see what the old say. Well, this week has been very chilly. It's bringing the coldest weather of the year so far. Jodie Oddie, it's a really good move finding somewhere warm up there in the hills. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Kate, it is chilly up here in the hills. It's just under nine degrees. Unfortunately, it was a compulsory move. It got very wet, very windy, very cold. So, we, oopsie daisy, we've ended up at the Crafers Hotel. What an accident. Let's have a look at tonight's weather photo first up. And this one comes from Annette Warden. Uh, she sent in a shot. It's an autumn leaf in a bubble. Now, I've spent all afternoon trying to work out just exactly how she's done that. Thanks, Annette. And if you have a weather photo you'd like to send us, the address is on the screen below. Well, today we had a warmer top than yesterday. It was 18 degrees in Adelaide. The low was 10 and currently in the city it's warmer than the hills. It's 14 degrees. Let's have a look in the outer metropolitan suburbs now. It reached 18 degrees in Elizabeth, Glenelg and Murray Bridge and 17 in Norlunga. Cooler in Mount Barker only reaching 13. Around the state it reached 19 in Port Pirie. 18 was the top for Cooba, Pedy, Roxby Downs, Sejuna and Port Augusta. 17 in Woomera and Wyala. 15 in Broken Hill and 14 in Clare. Further south now, 20 was the top for Port Lincoln, 19 in Kingscote and 18 in Victor Harbour. It got to 17 in Renmark and Keith, 16 in Narricourt, 15 in Mount Gambier and 14 in Nooriukpa. Let's have a look into the state today. It's also been a wet day in Darwin and Melbourne. It stayed dry in the other capitals. It reached 23 in Brisbane and 20 in Sydney and 14 in Canberra. Sunny and 20 in Perth. On the satellite photo now, there's patchy low cloud over the southeast in cool onshore winds and that's causing a few showers mostly on the coast but a high is a ridging in from the bite and that will bring settled conditions tomorrow let's have a look into state tomorrow partly cloudy in brisbane and sydney sunny in canberra and perth and showers for melbourne Back in our state now, there's a slight chance of showers over the agricultural area and northwest pastoral district. Maximum temperatures will reach 20 in Sejuna and Maitland, 19 in Cooba, Pedy, Roxby Downs, Woomera, Port Augusta, Wyala and Port Pirie, and 17 in Broken Hill and Clare. Uh, there's also a chance of showers in the southeast. Port Lincoln's heading for 21, 20 in Renmark, Victor Harbour and Keith, 19 in Kingscote, 18 in Nuriukpa and Narricourt, and 17 in Mount Gambier. Let's have a look at the metro waters, metro waters now. Winds variable about 10 knots, becoming westerly to southwesterly 10 to 15 knots in the middle of the day, then easing to about 10 knots in the evening with seas below one metre. In the suburbs, it should reach 20 in Elizabeth, Glenelg and Murray Bridge, 19 in Nolunga and 18 for Mount Barker. In Adelaide now, there is a slight chance of a shower tonight, dropping to 11 degrees. Tomorrow, we could get up to two millimetres of rain. We're heading for a top of 20 degrees. Let's have a look ahead to the weekend now. We could see a few showers, a top of 20 degrees for Saturday and for Sunday as well. We could get up to five millimetres of rain on Monday. Then, next week, let's have a look at it. It'll start dry from midweek. 
the temperatures will cool off into the high teens again. Now, Kate Freeban, I have proved tonight once again that you are a much tougher, much stronger weather girl than I am, than I am and that is why you do it all the time. A very big thanks to the Crafers Hotel. It was like the inn. We knocked on the door and there you go, they let us in. So thanks so much to them. Have a great night. See you. You found a beautiful spot. Thank you, Jodie. That's Adelaide's 10 Eyewitness News for now. Have a great night. Good night.